This is a DSG transmission and it's a gigantic pile of shit. Car companies are always trying to innovate new technology and the DSG transmission is one such innovation. DSG stands for don't shift gears, or at least that's what this one stands for. The DSG transmission was brought to the automotive world because automatic transmissions were slow shifting, uninspired and boring, just like you and me. The first production model that came with this trans would have been the Mark IV R32 in 2003, which was a European only model. It then came to the US in the Mark V GTI and was much more widespread. The early versions of this transmission had a few issues, most notably they were related to driver comfort. Most commonly on these, it would have an issue with taking off. It would be very herky-jerky and bang as you're taking off. <laughs> Fast forward 20 years, the DSG transmission is turned out to be a pretty solid and reliable transmission. Well, except this one because it has 200,000 miles and left us stuck on the side of the road. I bought this Mark V R32 for cheap because on deceleration, the transmission sounds like this. And this. Oh, that's in the trans. It also sporadically locked in second gear on the highway with a PRNDS light flashing. Now, I always tell you guys that I am a fake technician, but what I haven't told you before is that I have another nickname, and that's the drivetrain destroyer, the gearbox goblin, the transmission trouncer, the, the rear end ravager. Because on this table, I've hacked apart a CVT transmission, Our Touareg transfer case, that was bad. A Golf R transmission that locked up on the highway. And this one's about to be next. Because we've already stuck a borescope inside this thing, we know that there's metal all over the magnets inside this transmission. So let's take it apart and find out what's inside. If you know anything about DSG transmissions, you know the mech unit should be here. We've removed that to swap into the other trans, which didn't fix it. So uh, the bad mech unit is in the other bad trans instead of this bad trans. This is where our clutch is on our DSG. The dual clutch is actually in here. There's a big snap ring that would have held that on. We already took it off. This is the clutch assembly. I can take that off here. There's two clutches. There's an outer one and an inner one. Uh, we're gonna pull them out just to inspect them so you can see kind of how they work. You have a friction disc and then you have a metal plate and then a friction disc and a metal plate. They'll stack the whole way. Here's what a bad one would look like with our friend Charles, the home mechanic. He had a transmission of part but had clutch packs that were smoked. So if you look at these, you can see this steel plate has no bluing on it or anything like that that's like torching it. The bluing comes from overheating and you can see these are not overheated. So that inner clutch pack is good. There is the outer clutch and you can see same deal. Look at that friction material looking on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, friction material is good. The steel plates are good, clutches are good. Which means there must be something else wrong. So we have to go inside to see what we can find. Okay, we're taking off the cover for the oil pump. See what's inside. The best thing about taking apart a transmission like this is I don't have to give a shit how I take it apart. I don't have to care about it. I can just do that. Look Where at that. Wants it. Oil pump. Where yeah, oh yeah, that's metal. Oh my God. Yeah, that's pretty flaky. Well, when you, when you have metal sent through your whole transmission, it goes everywhere. If you remember, when we drained this fluid, it was gray and it was gray because there was metal. So that, <laughs> that's how it worked. Okay. Oil pump. So we're gonna take that out. You can see this is the rod. This is the drive rod for the oil pump. It drives inside the transmission. Ooh, <laughs> now it's gone forever. It's never coming back. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Here, you wanna see how a DSG oil pump works inside? Okay, let's take it apart. DSG oil pump, you're coming right up. Looks like every other oil pump. That's how they work. You wanna see how they work? Here, hold on, let me get this rod. Okay. So this guy works just like this, spins gets driven by the transmission, pumps oil out in the big hole, out the small hole, just like your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> just like when you eat food. Hopefully that's your small hole. <laughs> I'm not here to judge you. You can do whatever you want to do. This guy's got to come off. This is a tone ring. I think you might have to replace this if you actually take it off. Oh, that's just metal. That's just metal, see? So there's a snap ring back here that we got to get. Ow. Got it. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not gonna hurt myself this time. Hopefully I don't hurt Nathan. Oh, they, hey, that's broken. Hey, uh, I think we've identified at least a problem. 
So look right here. This is a cage bearing. See those balls? The stack, see that? That's part of the noise we are hearing. Ah. See this, like there's a stack of uh, shafts in there that drive all the gears. And this is supposed to not be moving around like that. I wonder if that wear on this oil pump, you can see right along this edge, I bet you it's not supposed to look like that. It's not normal. This is wear worn because of this bearing is damaged. But I bet you we probably could take this off without taking this snap ring off because it's how broken that is. Now there's not, ain't nothing to it, but to split this case wide open, So look at that, tra you like that tray? Find this tray exclusively at shopdap.com. <laughs> Buy yourself a DSG clutch back, then take it apart <laughs> and use it as a magnetic tray. It's not magnetic, but it's a tray. I'm gonna flip her up just so we can check for bolts on the other side. There, see, all these bolts right here. Oh, we're making a mess. Oh, there it is. There it is. Don't worry, don't worry, I got it. Don't worry, magnetic tray, shopdap.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, it left all the bolts at least. The bolts didn't f***ing go everywhere. Does that come with the product? Yeah, yeah, free dumping it on the floor <laughs> while you're puking transmission fluid everywhere. Found at shopdap.com. <laughs> no, the problem is the trans is moving everywhere while I'm doing it and I'm covered in fluid. If I had a cameraman who couldn't be on the camera and instead was helping me, it would be much easier. Oh, sh come on. I hate this. There we go. Look at that. There's Johnny. So the, this is where our metal was inside that we saw with our boroscope, right? You can see our magnets. So that metal clearly came from somewhere. You can see this is a problem. This is a bearing, right? So these are all the balls. That cage is obviously gone. This is supposed to be a bearing. It's, it's not a bearing anymore. So you can see right here, the race is cracked. So as I mentioned, when we picked this car up, there's definitely mechanical damage inside this transmission. And this is probably where all this metal came from. We're gonna inspect further to see, but you can see this race is really beat up from this cracking I see there's a lot of metal on the bottom that I can see it already. Okay, oil pickup. There's a seal. So this is, a, this is an internal filter that picks up the stuff in here. There's, you can see there's metal flake inside there, but also more importantly, look at this metal. You wanna see how much metal there is? The trans we put into the R32 was rebuilt by a shop. I bought it really cheap from a guy. He was happy to send it to us and we put it in. Didn't fix the car. It actually has different issues than we started with. So I think the rebuild was a problem. I was nervous when I heard a shop rebuilt it because there's a lot of things in this. Number one, you really wouldn't rebuild a DSG Trans. There's not a lot inside other than replacing a diff with an upgraded one that you'd even do in the first place. That all these places with all these seals like this and different places inside internally where the fluid flows, this gasket, all these different places, these are non-serviceable parts because guess what? This transmission is not supposed to be serviced. So you can't just buy one of these gaskets because it's not purchasable. You could try to make one, can't buy one. So why'd you buy a rebuild train? Because <laughs> it was cheap, god damn it, that's why. Now, I'm buying one again. We're on our third train. I'm on a, our second new used transmission. I'm gonna take this apart. Is that the, this? The neck? This, <laughs> this is, guys at home, this is the transmission neck. <laughs> See all these fingers? See all these little fingies? Those grab onto the neck. This is for fluid into the transmission. Uh, I, based on the way it looks, it looks like it's just for lubrication. It just like sprays oil through the system in for lubrication. So feeds fluid from this, this pipe here, up through here, and then just kind of disperses it around to make sure everything stays lubed. You gotta always lube your holes. So this is how gears work. That's selecting a gear. A manual transmission looks almost identical to this. The difference, is in a DSG, obviously it's automatic. 
On the front side of our trans, we have our shafts that run through. This is the inner and then outer. These attach to the clutch pack. So you saw here, this is where we had our clutch pack. We had our inner and then we had our outer. This is where the dual clutch comes from. So one clutch attaches to the inner, one clutch attaches to the outer. That's how it shifts gear so fast is because it switches from the inner shaft to the outer shaft. So essentially when a gear shift happens in a DSG, it's not really shifting gears, it's shifting clutch packs. It shifts from clutch pack one to clutch pack two. So if you watch what I'm doing right here, right now I'm turning just the outer. And as you can see, this one is not turning and this one is. And that's how the hollow one goes through this one. So this is the outer one. And if we turn the inner, you can see it turns there. So the gear stacks turn separately. Driving first gear, second gear is ready to engage. It's already selected in the transmission. You wanna shift, boom, just grabs clutch pack two, now you're in gear. These aren't the actual gears, I'm just using this as a representation. Shifts into third gear, and then I can't turn it anymore because it's too hard. We get it. You get the idea, you get it. You're... It always has the next gear. Always has the next gear ready and then switch clutches back and forth. Just bam, 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 bam. And the reason why these tend to be pretty reliable is because they're basically a manual transmission with automatic functions instead of being an automatic transmission. I'm gonna show you how park works. So this right here is what actually holds your car in park. And this is the differential that actually turns your car. So you can see these teeth here are what that engages with. So what you do is when you put your car in park, that slides down like that, locking into this, which is what holds to your wheels, keeping your actually car from moving. Just locks this big bar, bam, down into here. Let's pull, let's pull these necks out. It's about to be a, a real problem on our hands. I didn't even hurt myself on that one. I thought I was about to. Okay, so this, this is the DSG gear. Ooh, look at all that metal there. See all that? That was the metal. And this is the wear we saw. So this is that wear that we were seeing with the boroscope. And the reason why I was wearing is because this bearing we know is moving all over the place and it was allowing this to kind of kick up and down like that. So as this transmission was turning, again, this is the, this is the inner clutch. It was... And probably the reason why, if you remember, there was like a sporadic starting issue on that car where it would like lock. No. Hey, it just needs a little bit of coercion. <laughs> no big deal. Can't wait to drive this home. Can't wait to drive this 500 miles. <laughs> wow. Probably because these gears were like crunching up together. The dual is because you can see it's hollow. This is the one clutch, this is the other clutch, and then they come together. And have a baby. And, and they make one daddy clutch. This is the mommy clutch, this is the daddy clutch. Bam. It's pretty incredible actually how strong transmissions are when you, when you think about it. Let's say you figure all of these gears drive your car. These gears, this is the main gears that drive your car on a DSG. This, without this, nothing's possible. Now we've learned a lot today. Uh, most importantly, we should learn to go to shoptap.com for all your Volkswagen Audi parts needs. Select your vehicle, shop for your car, buy some parts, genuine Volkswagen Audi parts, performance parts, all kinds of parts. Tell your mom, I need your credit card. Parts. So the question on everybody's mind is DSGs. If I have one, should I be worried? So this trans had 200,000 miles on it. I like that noise it makes. DSG transmissions are super reliable. The only damage that we had with this transmission were the bearings themselves. If that bearing had not broken, this bearing in the race, this stuff wouldn't have been moving around inside of here, causing all this metal. Had it not been for that, this trans would be fine. Sorry, I did it again. In closing, DSGs are reliable. Uh, Mechatronic units can have some problems. That's really generally the only thing that you would have a problem with or clutch packs. There's our video. We watched it. We came, we saw, we ripped apart a transmission. I haven't even cut anything yet. I should cut something. <laughs>